Lights flicker, casting eerie shadows across the room. You hear a creaking sound and see the glow of a distant torch. As you approach it, the shadows shift and you catch a glimpse of something moving in the darkness. You take a deep breath, knowing that whatever lies ahead, the lighting has set the stage for an unforgettable experience. Welcome to the world of game lighting. From the neon-lit streets of Cyberpunk 2077 to the dark and ominous dungeons of Skyrim, lighting can make or break a game's atmosphere. It's a key component of game design that can greatly enhance the player's experience. With dedicated lighting artists working tirelessly to create visually stunning and immersive environments, they carefully craft the lighting in each scene using a combination of ambient lighting, spotlights and special effects to create their desired mood. And so far, in the map creator portion of the virtual tabletop I'm developing, where you can play games like Dungeons & Dragons with a first-person perspective, we have the ability to add individual lights and we already have some special effects built into it. So, to complete that trio, all we need is a way to customize the ambient lighting. Practically speaking, this meant implementing a way to change Unity's scene ambient color, sunlight, skybox and finally the fog settings. All of this during runtime. So that's exactly what I wanted to do in this devlog. Give the ability for the GM to customize the overall look of their maps. And as has become quite usual with adding new stuff into the map creator, it all started with creating a new UI window for it. Divided into the different customization segments I said before. Making the UI has become an easy process. The problematic task is always coding and connecting the features into the UI. But let me take you step by step. The ambient color is simply a button that opens the color picker added in the last devlog. And as you can see, you can change the overall ambient color using it. Thank god we finally got rid of that default unity look. For the skybox, for now you can pick from 4 different options. One for the morning, one for the night, one for the sunset and another for a cloudy day. Hopefully in the future I can have the ability for you to import your own skyboxes into the map creator. The sunlight section simply has a button that lets you change the color of the sun and has two input fields to change its positioning. This is so you can tinker with the shadow direction. And finally, you can customize the color of the fog as well as its density by changing the near and far values that mostly act as a way to set the density of the fog. And all of these four options can really bring the feel of a map to life when added together according to what you're trying to achieve. And with that we have the lighting settings implemented. I was extremely surprised at how easy and quick it was implementing this. So I guess that's the devlog? Well, not exactly. I actually did another thing that's related to the visuals of the game. And before I tell you what it is, if you're enjoying the video, please consider leaving a like and subscribing. And also, let's try something new. Tell me in the comments, has the game ever impressed you specifically because of the lighting? I'll start by saying that for me, this specific moment in Journey is the example that comes to my mind. Simply incredible. But let's go back to development. I wanted to add a less touch of visual development to the maps through the use of post-processing. Basically, post-processing applies filters and effects to a game's images. It's applied right before the images are sent to your monitor, hopefully enhancing the original image that you end up seeing. And what post-processing will I be using specifically? Unity has a ton of options I can pick from, but since I'm not going for a specific visual style with this, more so trying to generally improve the visuals of the VTT and the created maps, I only applied effects that in my opinion, can always be applied despite what the GM may be trying to create. With those post-processing effects being Depth of Field, Bloom and the ambient occlusion. Let me explain what each does quickly. Depth of Field is used to make things that are far away or close up look blurry, while the things that are in the middle of the screen look clear. Bloom is used to make really bright things like a light bulb or the sun look like they're glowing and radiating light. And finally, ambient occlusion is used to make things that are close together or touching look a little darker or shadowed, like there's something in the way blocking some of the light. And adding this was again extremely simple. All I did was check some boxes and like magic, coming out the other hand with enhanced visuals. I feel these three effects really help bring the visuals of the maps together, making it all look that extra bit better and making it all fit together nicely. And now, as has become usual in these latest devlogs, I want to show the current capabilities of the VTT that I've been developing. So, here is a new map that I've created completely using the in-game map creator. And this time I will show it to you continuous time-lapse style, so you get the complete picture of what I did and how.
And as you can see, it is possible now to achieve a look with a very different mood than before. All thanks to these lighting settings and the post processing is just a cherry on top. We really have come a long way from that first map created a couple of months ago. It is crazy to see what I'm able to put together with the handful of features I've implemented into the map creator. And now I feel that this map creator is actually pretty robust, at least for this stage of development. And I'm thinking that for next devlog I will do the last couple of additions and some map tests before moving on to something else. Because honestly, the online has been on the back of my mind for a while now. I'm scared. And if you've reached this point, thank you so much for watching. And if you want to see more from the Metas project, check the playlist right here, where all development is easily accessible for you to watch.